Hi guys, it's Lee here again. Um, so it is a beautiful day in Wales. Um, I've done quite a few things today with the family and I've done a little bit in my garage, which I might show you later on because people were loving the boat and the carp fishing stuff and, and things like that. So um, yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, just a little update on the pond and how the fish are getting on and um, the problems I've had to overcome with diseased fish. I got basically one, two swimming leper in there at the moment, um, but I'll explain. So from my last video, if you can remember, um, I had a problem in the pond and uh, it just wasn't getting better. So I contacted uh, Dr. Paula Reynolds from Lancashire Fish Health, who was extremely um, helpful. Um, so I sent her a swab. She, you know, she sent me a swab through. I swabbed my chag, my chag. Um, sent her the swab back within um, maybe a week because it was over Easter bank holiday. Um, I had some um, information back off her regarding what was causing the carnage in the pond. Um, and it was, um, I can't even pronounce what it was, but she did suggest, yes, this is not gonna go away. Realistically, you need to get some antibiotics for the koi. Now she did explain to me that when I actually um, contacted her and, 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 and explained what was wrong, she, she explained the process to me saying, I can tell you what it is. I can't prescribe you the correct antibiotics that is something that your vet will do and if you have a very good relationship with your vet then it's a possibility that you can um, get antibiotics prescribed through her diagnosis and email and also maybe a picture of your koi um, and they should prescribe you but they're not legally bound to do so to so that end of the stick i did get a email back from Dr. Paula Reynolds. Uh, it was very interesting, very um, very needed to be honest. So I went down to the um, down to my vets and uh, nah, there was no way they were going to give me Batril I needed for my koi. Um, there's no way to get it off the vets at all. They, they just wasn't having it. Even though I'm actually a trained combat medic and I've done a little bit of intravenous and intramuscular um, injections before on human subjects, let alone koi. Um, yeah, there was no, no, no way. So out of desperation, I did phone a good old friend from Quality Nishnagoi, old Tim in Warrington. So um, I came back, parked outside the house a little bit gutted to be honest. Um, phoned Tim, I explained my problem, I said, Tim, I said, you know, this is the score, I showed him a couple of pictures of the fish, told him I needed bait roll, he goes, yeah, you know, you're not going to get that, he goes, um, he goes, but what I suggest you do is, um, dose the pond up with chloramine tea. So luckily I had chlor uh, chloramine tea with me, um, the dosages, uh, they were on the back, back of the packet there's two dosages, there's one for X and there's one for Y and Z. So Tim said, don't worry about those. He goes, I've got a 2000 gallon pond here. Not the biggest pond in the world, but it's certainly not the smallest. It's not all about size. That's what my missus keeps saying. <laughs> my missus keeps saying, yeah, it's not about size because I'm, yeah, because I'm not very good at stirring the porridge, but I'm good at licking the spoon, if that makes sense to you. And that's something that kids are not going to understand, but as an adult, you should. So to that end of the scale, um, basically I um, took Tim's advice. Um, I put 25 kilo of salt in my pond, which raised it up to about 0.4%. He did suggest put 36 kilos in, but I only had one sack. So that went in. I have ordered some more, but it hasn't turned up yet. And also he told me to give it a super duper, do a super duper dose of chloramine tea. So I, I, you know, I, I disregarded the recommendations on the back of the packet. Obviously Tim's been dealing with koi for 20 years or something. So he knows exactly what he's doing. And he told me for my size pond, 
it goes uh, put three doses for three days one day one dose a day, a day for three days um, 40 grams of chloramine tea it goes get it in there with the salt it's so crazy Mick Tim knows what he's talking about because on the packet it says you know don't use salt with this uh, with this treatment of the pond but he's telling me otherwise and to be honest I've done that and um, I think Tim might be coming down this week coming so he's gonna have a look at the fish and possibly treat it with some special potions but we'll see um, so I've done that but before I did do it I actually took the two questionable fish out and I treated them um, you know I took the surface scum off I think I removed about 15 scales uh, down to the recommendation of Tim again um, and uh, topically treated those left the uh, the treatment on there the anti back for a uh, for a couple of minutes and then uh, plop in with a jellyfish um, and I thought that would be the best way for the chloramine tea actually to get onto their flesh as well you know you know because it's obviously not raw but because it's exposed I've got rid of that surface scum kapow um, and to be honest the questionable koi ie the Danichi Kahaku and um, not sure where my chag's from, but I know it's from a good farm. I might might look that up actually. Um, they look better. The chag pretty much is minus a few scales, but they're not risen anymore, and they're not pussy, pussy, and they don't look inflamed. So I think he's on the mend. Poor bugger, he's got some fit battle scars on him. But do you know what? I actually love that koi because he's got such so much character. He just comes right up. I can hold half an orange, and he just munches when I'm holding it so I really like him and even though he looks like Freddy Krueger I actually like the poor bugger um, I don't know I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to treat him at Christmas because yeah looks like the guy from Phantom of the Opera but the um, the Danichi Koi is minus a few scales I'm hoping that he's not gonna look too bad but yeah so um, touch wood I think that chloramine tea um, supersonic three doses has done that quite well and I'll be honest with you you know Tim says it's gonna it's gonna really affect his you know it's, it's gonna hammer your filter but my water parameters are, are good and um, the the water is crystal clear so uh, I don't think it's, uh, I, think it's um, I don't think it's done that much to be honest so fingers crossed I'm going to actually take the fish out after this video and I'm going to topically treat. Um, there's, the, there's the chag there. I don't know if you can see him in the window. He's got half his tail missing and a, half his scales, poor bugger. But, mate, he's happy as pig and shit, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I'm going to treat the fish again, put them back in. But what I'm going to do now is take it down the shed and show you what I've been working on today. Yes! Yeah, so um, what I'm going to show you is, so, basically, this is the... See the one with the red nose? That is the Danichi Kahaku. Look at the side of his body. Can you see that white patch? For some reason that's gone white. This is the Chag. That's, uh, yeah, he's got little patches all over him, bless him. But um, there it is. Can everyone see that? So that's gone bright white, but it's it looks a lot healthier than it was. So I'm going to take him out later on, treat that. Can you see his belly there? Look, that one's totally healed up. It obviously, it's, it's minor scales, but it's healed. The rest of the fish, absolutely fine. Not a problem. Strange, strange, strange. But anyway, apart from that, the pond's going well. Listen, guys, quick note, I'm almost on 500 followers. I'm still using that at the moment. Well, I'm not even using it. All I'm doing is actually just using it as a bloody bin. So I just take that up. A little tiny bit every now and again. My fish absolutely love sinking pellet. They love it. So I'm trying to feed them and uh, keep them strong, to be honest. The stronger they are, the better they're going to fight any kind of bacteria or infection. So anyway, guys, they've had an orange today. So cute, look. Oh, there's a little bit left in there. Mate, how cute is that? I just think that's the cutest thing ever. Anyway, so, um, uh, yes. So I'll tell you what's coming back to life as well. Here's my bonsai tree. That is coming back to life. And this one, that one's brown bread. Um, yeah. Um, and I've got some peas on the go, guys. I don't know what those were, but they're not growing. But these peas are, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, guys, so 
I know I said I was going to seriously clean the garage and I actually have quite, I, I, I was up this morning at six o'clock in the morning and I was sorting all the garage out, I cleaned everything and I put everything over in the corner. But I tell you what I have been doing guys, so my rib, okay, is, you know, the orange is, is pretty tatty and the bumper plate is quite tatty and, you know, um, I did get a quote for this, how much it would be to retube a five meter rib. And a quote came back, guess, 3,800 pounds. Mate, that's more than I actually paid for this rib second hand. So uh, that was obviously out of the question. So what I've done is, I've actually had an epiphany and I bought, basically, this is rubber roofing for garages, you know, whatever you want to do. This is what, actually what I've got on the roof of my garage. And what I've done is, I've cut, I've cut basically um, templates out of whatever I needed. And I've got some pretty strong smelling funky adhesive. You know, this one, Stormoprene, nice. Contact adhesive. Um, it's quite expensive. I think a tub of that is five liters. It it's two parts, so it comes with, I don't think it's an activator, but it, I don't know, does something anyway. But um, that is about, I think they're about 70 pounds each. So I've got another one there, and that's actually gone a long way. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need the two of them, but I might really go to town with the rubber bumper I'm gonna put on it. Yeah, so what I've done is, look at that, guys. She's blacked out. Now, don't look at this section here, because what I have got coming, so it's, it's, it's all the way around to there, so what I've got coming is, this is, this old original uh, you know, plastic bumper is, um, is a hundred mil. Okay. So what I've got is I've got a double D, a real chunky looking one, and it's 140 mil. So it will cover this about where my, in between my, in, in my fingers there, my thumb. So obviously when that comes, I just bought it today. So when that comes now, that will sit on the outside of that and totally seal and totally cover this, but I'll really go to town with that. And then I've got to cover this as well. So how I'm going to do that is, I'm going to get some new brass rings in here. I've got new um, marine grade rope to, to come through this. Um, what I'm also going to do as well, a little bit smaller than this, but I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to double line each one of the, um, the overlaps. So yeah, so when I bought this rib, it only had a single jockey seat. So you can see where the orange starts, it was, yeah, a selfish seat. I've obviously bought this for me and my wife and son and possibly a couple of friends to go out on a stormy day fishing for bass around South Wales and West Wales. So what I've done is I've actually um, extended it. I've uh, made a wooden form. I give myself about three or four mil, you know, um, uh, leeway so when I actually put the um, the fiberglass over the top of the the timber I could actually get it flush so this actually is all going to be um, painted black uh, with some uh, gel coat um, also the actual hull so once I finish actually doing the whole rib in black I'm gonna take the engine off and I'm going to flip the boat over I'm gonna inspect the hull give it a um, give it a once over with a 120 grip possibly fill in any bits and bobs and then i'm also going to give that a a, a black uh, gel coat so the whole rib will be black i've also got a very good friend who's an engineer and um he's been at the moment so this was actually the a frame that came off you know the rib it's probably about an inch stainless steel fitted onto the tiller here and it came up but i didn't like that so um I'm doing, um, uh, actually I'm doing a few tattoos and we're doing an exchange. So I'm tattooing him and he's making me a one and a half inch thick double A frame to come up here, which will come quite high to get all my GPS stuff on and aerials and stuff. But it's also going to have a towing hitch on there on the top here for, uh, and it will be strong enough to tow people water skiing and kneeboarding and wakeboarding and whatever. So that's a bonus. 
who knows i don't know but anyway that's the that's the boat in progress and i'm super chuffed i've done so much research and so many little trial patches on this to try to get the uh, the you know the the adhesion like banging do you know what i mean and it is on it sticks like shizen so yeah this is going to be my tactical rib i don't know what i'm going to do with it probably just going to fish for bass not even illegally but it will look pretty stealthy in the water I've put all of my carp stuff nice and tidy up there and I was going to go through my carp stuff today because loads of people said, oh, can you go through your carp stuff? Because you know what? People who love ponds kind of love water and everything. I've also got my, oh, all my technicum, techniums there. Do you know what? Actually, this might be another good giveaway. So I've got a skimmer, surface skimmer, which I've never really used and that is pretty much brand new. It's been in my pond, my old pond for about, I don't know, four weeks so i think what i'm gonna do guys i'm gonna make that lovely and sparkling and clean and after i've given away my um my um not i'm not gonna give my jamaican beer away to anyone but once i've got rid of and i've given away my um auto feeder that's my next uh that's my next giveaway because you know what it's nice to uh to give stuff away to people who need it more than i do so crystal air source heat pump is at oh 19.1 degrees shit the bed that should only be on 18 i suppose it's the ambient temperature at the moment is quite high um let's have a little look in the pill pump house little look in the pump house oh mr miyagi's little thing so pump house how's it going all right Right, this pump house is looking okay. Um, do you know what? I'm going to show you guys how I clean my filter because I am going to give it. You see all the crap down there? So here we go. First thing I do is kaboom. Kick that off. Boom. Turn off the pump as well. Put in the center cone. Chikoom. On with the center bubbles off with the external bubbles so now we'll give that a real good a real good mixing like grot bags holdren so there we are yeah everything's working good oh she's lovely i just hope that fish is not going to get ill because i love that one so anyway um yes so I'm going to leave that bubbling away for a little bit. Let's have a look at my skimmer. Skimmer's not too bad. I did give that a clean out the other day. Oh, and guys, I have got massive news, by the way. So, back your shower. Ah, ah. My God, that sounds amazing. Um, so I've actually ordered another 30 kilograms of backy house media so now i have got a grand total of 50 kilograms ready to go in there little and often that did cost me 405 quid or something don't tell the missus do not tell the missus do not tell the missus yasmin if you're listening to this just try to look good in front of people it was free um yeah so so big news so if you can remember i was going to put my backy shower here not no more so I'm a man always bored so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take down my filter roof and all the woodwork when the when the temperature raise, rises a little tiny bit and what I'm gonna do guys is I'm going to sit my backy shower pretty much over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise that wall up to about there the wall's gonna come all the way across here this side of my pond is all going to be glassed and also what i'm going to do is where you can see my decking i'm going to put a set of french doors all glassed polycarb roof build up this side with uh, with concrete blocks and i'm going to make my koi pond into a koi house um i've decided on that because i think the winter in Wales is a bit crap and I don't want massive bills from heating and I think it would just be nice to sit in this little area here with a little chair and watch my fish 
So to that end, I do like I said, I'm going to take off my wood. I'm going to extend the wall all the way across to the end of the patio here. I'll put the door possibly in here. This wall will be raised up, so when I put the roof back, uh, the roof beams from the top of my deck in, it will come all the way across, sit on the roof, and then obviously I'll have the pump house, all of this area here. Um, to that point, I am going to put my backy shower pretty much where my hand is there and I will be pulling straight off the skimmer. So this pipe will move, this pipe here will move, so I can put the 3000 down there, come straight across, straight up, plop, and into the uh, backy shower. So I don't think I'm gonna get my backy shower up and running as quick as I wanted to. I don't know, uh, it's a shame, because I've got that backy shower and I'm gagging to get that going. Well, that's a plan I've got at the moment. I don't know if it's a crazy plan or not, but I don't know whether to still just put it over there because even if I do build this up and put it into the, you know, in, 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 into a little koi house, I think the backy shower might still look nice there and I can just start fitting it in ASAP. That means straight away in military talk. Yeah, but anyway, watch this space. I still haven't 100% decided on that. But I've got everything I need pretty much now. Got mate that 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 backy show will run really well with 50 kg of backy house media anyway. So I've pretty much got what I need to get that run in, which makes me think I might just put it up there because that will be a full wall and it will still look really nice up that side. And it makes sense because I got the skimmer here, the flow comes around. Do you know what I mean? So I draw in from the skimmer, it comes down the backy shower and then it comes back around so I'm not I'm not taking clean water I'm actually taking kind of dirty water from from the circulation point of things anyway guys I hope you enjoyed that video um it wasn't the well I don't know might be interesting for many people I don't know another thing about actually if you can remember last week I told you that I was going to um cat proof my garden it's worked um so yeah, obviously I've got my um, electric fence up there. And what I've done here is I've actually netted. So cats, so obviously this isn't electrified, but I've got bird net in here all the way around and actually on that side there. So yeah, cats, right. Okay, so cats can get in down the stairs, but the last two weeks I've had no cat poo. I've had no notifications from my ring camera saying that there's cats in here. So I think, yeah, so I think I might have, I think I might have sorted out the cat problem. Um, yeah, happy day. So I hope you like this update. Everyone uh, stay safe because, you know, I know things are opening slowly, but I think uh, it's, still, it's still wise to keep your distance because everyone, who knows? No one knows who's got the lurgy. So anyway, stay safe guys, and if you like this video, subscribe and like, and if you don't, I don't care, because I get more likes than unlikes, and that's what matters. <laughs>